The old coot here coming at you with another exciting video showing everybody today how to save money on grated cheese by just grinding it yourself. So this is Parmigiano Reggiano. And what I did was I just bought like a massive block from whatever the local store was, Trader Joe's, wherever. But basically what I do is I use a very large chef knife. This is a 12 inch Victorinox. You're going to need something that you can basically get a hand on and feel comfortable as you're pushing down through the cheese and cutting it. Also, you're gonna need a very good food processor, and I did put links down below in the description. This one happens to be by Cuisinart. As you can see right there, Cuisinart 14 cup food processor. I did put a link down in the description there down below, so make sure to check that out. But what you're gonna need is you're gonna need your cutting blade, right? And that's all you should need in there. And then you're also gonna need the top, obviously. We'll get to that in a second. I've already ground some up so you can kind of see what it looks like. It, it comes out to this nice, fine, you know, coarse texture. And obviously you can grind it as coarse or fine as you like. So that's also an option too for you. Anyways, what I do is I remove the outer peel, which I've already done as well. And just basically using your chef knife, you just kind of want to, I'll show you here for demonstration purposes. But basically this is why you want the 12 inch chef knife or something large that you can get two hands on and feel comfortable using. So basically I'm pushing down and I'm, I'm removing the outer peel or the, the, the scorcha as we say in Italian. So then I'm going to grab this one, do the same thing, right? Just removing that outer peel because usually there's some wax here. So you can also see the color difference if you want to take a look there. See how you've got this outer waxy stuff that's on the outside? You don't want that in your final product. You know what you can use this for? Quick tip is if you're making a soup like minestrone or you're making like tortellini or something, you can put this in the soup to flavor it. Just make sure to pull it back out before you serve your soup. But this will give it a nice cheesy depth, deep kind of a flavor kind of a thing. Anyways, what I do is I have to cut this block up and this is pretty thick. It's about an inch and a half thick at the thickest part. And as you can see there, what I want to do is I want to cut it up into about like three quarter of an inch to one inch cubes so that the food processor can process it a little more smoother and easier and you don't have to strain the machine. So what I'm gonna do basically is just kind of using the same method, 12 inch chef knife here, just going straight down, boom, cutting, and then uh, uh, shifting off to the, for to the front as I can. You could also do this on the side, like if you wanted to do it on this side and do the same thing. I find that when I'm working just right in front of me like this, it's a lot easier to control the knife and have a little more dexterity and have the confidence to push through. But basically I'm cutting it into, I'd say like a little over half inch to three quarters of an inch, like little wedges. And this is phase one, right? So now I'm gonna push through and just get through the rest of this, testing out my new camera system. And obviously if you wanna go a little bit smaller, you'll just make it that much easier for your food processor, right? To grind this all up. So now what I wanna do is I wanna just kinda of maybe cut these in half as well. You can do them one at a time or you can do them two at a time. It's all about your confidence level and try to use more of the heel of the knife, which is this area, as opposed to the tip of the knife, because you don't want your hand on the very tip. That's what she said, because if it slips, you can, you can end up cutting four of your fingers. So warning, 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 just try to use more of the heel. Keep this hand closer towards like the middle area, just so as you're pushing down, you have a little more confidence as you push. And if you Take your cheese out maybe about 10 minutes before you're ready to cut it. It'll just cut through that much easier. So it's not like rock hard and stiff. If, you, if your cheese was frozen, I've seen some people freeze their wedges of cheese. Like maybe there's a really good sale at like Trader Joe's or something. You can totally do that. Just make sure it's thoroughly thawed out. I'd say maybe leave it in the fridge for about a day to completely thaw it. Maybe even two days and then go ahead and start this process. So anyways, I'm cutting through the rest of my little wedges here. Turning them into like little cheese sticks and okay this is another good tip so this is the thin part right if i turned it this way this would be the wider part always try to cut down the wider parts if i try to cut this way it's a little too floppy and it might roll and you might end up rolling the knife and cutting your fingers so that's why it's important to, to always have the widest surface right widest surface down on the board that way as you cut it's a little more stable does that make sense? I hope so. Remember to hit that like button, by the way, and also hit the subscribe button down there below if you like your scene and you want to see more of it. Okay, so let's cut through the rest of these wedges here. Cutting there, cutting there. 
I'm literally cutting the cheese. Oh my God, okay. Nobody wants to be near me at a party. Anyways, <laughs> cutting through right there to the widest part. There you go. So now I've got all my little wedges. What I'm gonna do is just bundle and save, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make one big slice right here and just go down. This should go like a hot knife through butter. And obviously, if you want to just do a couple at a time, you can do that too. It takes a little bit longer, but hey, if it gives you more confidence doing that, the goal is that you're trying to get little cubes or so, little cubes that are about an inch or so in size, right? So each side is about the same. And if you happen to cut through a few extra, no big deal. If you've got smaller pieces, bigger pieces, makes no difference. They all go through the food processor the same way. The important thing is, is try to make sure that the biggest piece that you have is somewhere in the ballpark of around an inch. You get the idea. So now what I'm going to do is, let me move this out of the way, bring my food processor a little closer. Ooh, there's your blade cam right there. Okay, so there's our food processor. I'm basically going to take my cheese and put it into the food processor right and dump it in there as i go and as you can see right we're just we're just jumping into the food processor no my no rhyme or reason just make sure your blade was already in there because it's hard to force your blade down when there's cheese underneath it so if your blade was in there first then you put the cheese in it's a little bit easier to do all this so i'd say one wedge like one usual normal size wedge that you would get at like trader joe's is a good size to cut up and put in there if you're going to buy your cheese from Costco, like let's say you're doing this with uh, Pecorino Romano is a popular one at Costco that they sell. What I would do in that case is cut that one. That's a huge like little wedge or huge wedge. What I would do is cut that one into up into two pieces and do two batches. Like you don't want to overload your machine, but I'd say somewhere around this much cheese in there, which as you can see is around this level, right? You, you're not too high up the machine. You're just about maybe halfway up the uh, the spindle with the blade on it. That's about a good level to fill it up to. I wouldn't overfill your cheese beyond that because then you're really straining the motor and all that. But anyways, as we go in here, we're going to put our, our top on. Turn this. And then what I like to do is I like to just pulse first. Right? So you have, you have your on button and then you have your pulse button. What I like to do is just pulse first. Just to kind of get it going, right? you may want to do some of that kind of action, makes no difference. And then once you feel like you've gotten to this point where it almost looks like it's completely graded anyway, at that point I would just hit your on button. <laughs> Reminding everybody to hit that like button, that thumbs up, wherever that is. So I'd say my cheese is almost about there, right? You're not gonna get a finer, finer grind than this unless you really keep going. If you do want it a little bit finer than this, you know, let it run just a little bit longer. I'm glad this happened because if, if you were listening closely, you would have heard that the machine was a little bit easier, right? Going through the cheese, like if you notice the sound kind of changed, it went from a thumping, thuddy kind of a noise to a more smoother rumble and hum. And then eventually it got down into a smooth vibration type of a noise. And as you can see, our cheese is just a little bit finer. Let's take a look again from the top. And as you can see, our cheese came out very, very nice and fine and smooth. So this would be something I would then use for pesto or use for pastas. If you want to make a lasagna or whatever, you get the idea. But there you go. Remove your blade, use your spatula or whatever implement you have, and then go ahead and transfer it to a container. If you want to stick around for the next video after this one, I will be making pesto, Italian pesto. So that's why you want to hit that notification bell wherever that is. Hit that like button and I will catch you all on the next exciting video. After, of course, you hit the comment section as well if you have any comments or questions. And also hit the description section for links to this 12-inch chef knife, the spatula, 
obviously the food processor and anything else you might need for your kitchen needs. That'll be down there below in the description section, so make sure to check that out. I'm the old coot, and I'll catch you all on the next exciting video.